Uh, we want to bring in Mark Walsh, who's a, a, a freelancer for Fox. You live just a few blocks away and witnessed. Dude, I was, I was, I live on the 43rd floor of a building, which is five blocks from the World Trade Center itself. I witnessed the entire thing from beginning to end. People talk about how it looked like a movie. I know when I came walking down here early this morning and saw both towers on fire and people on every street corner, it was, it was, it was like a movie. But you watched the planes hit the towers. I was watching with my roommate. It was approximately several minutes after the first plane had hit. I saw this plane come out of nowhere and just ream right into the side of the twin tower exploding through the other side and then i witnessed both towers collapse one first and then the second mostly due to structural failure because the fire was just too Bobby intense Parker, i think he's going to come back to the microphones now and make a statement uh looks like the family is there and they're getting ready to make uh to come to the microphone so we'll listen to that My name's Robbie Parker. Hello. This is Rose Nyer. What? That was I'm one of the winners of the Publishers Clearinghouse. Oh and McMahon wants to see me right away. Who is this ghastly man? Ace Ventura, pet detective. And you must be the Monopoly guy. It has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has until to be. I found this photo from Grandmere State Park. This is from Joshua Nowicki. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. You typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Dose of Reality Radio. I'm your host, Brian Stavely. And today we are actually gonna do my awakening episode number 18. I have Stasha Erickson with me. Hi, Stasha. Hi, Brian. Thanks so much for having me. That intro was awesome. I was dying when uh, when she picked up the phone and said Ed McMahon was calling from Publishers <laughs> Clearinghouse. Wow. The Ed McMahon, the Ed, I'm telling you, and it was I can't take credit for it because it was a it was a commenter on one of my videos that said it. He said we should rename this thing the Ed McMahon effect, and I was like, man, that's <laughs> that's pretty good because <laughs> it's such a huge one. Um, for anybody wow, that's, that's not familiar with. Anyway. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? I just, I just said your intro blew me away. I was very impressed by that. Thank you. <laughs> well, it actually used to be longer, but it was like five minutes. I'm like, eh, that's a little long. I like to have like two minutes just to give people time to get into the into the video. Um, so anybody that hasn't seen this before, the My Awakening series, what I do is I interview various researchers in different communities. And, you know, you guys know I research a whole bunch of different topics. So it's all different ones. Um, today, I'm going to have Stasha on. And she has written a book on the Mandela effect, actually. And I want to get her whole um, personal story, her awakening story. And then we'll talk a little bit about her book and any other projects and stuff uh, as, as we get to it. So, Stasha, you know, I ask a lot of people when I do these, um, when, you know, the way I ask them, and I feel yours might be a little different. So I'm going to ask you a different question. But what I usually ask them is what first made them realize that the media and the government are controlled in this type of awakening. But from looking at your book and, and some of your stuff, was it more of a spiritual thing for you? Because I heard you say you got away from religion and towards psychology. So was it more of a spiritual awakening or was it something else? Or was it, you know, realizing governments align? What, what type of awakening was it for you? And when did it start? Well, it was really a combination of things. And um, actually what I did was I actually finished a religion degree. I didn't actually leave religion. I I did a two year religion degree and then now that's kind of religion's my minor. And right now my major is psychology because I felt that there was a lot of answers hidden within the Bible. And then when the Mandela effect started, that made me look even deeper. So it was definitely a spiritual thing that happened for me. But then it kind of once I started learning about things like mind control and stuff like that, I wanted to really help people like go beyond. We can see that there's we're being manipulated. But how what can I do to help people? So I spent two years learning all the scriptural stuff. And then now I'm in the next uh, two to four years where well, I'll be doing like clinical psychology. And I want to help people who have been mind controlled and have been victims of this type of stuff, because I believe that the big uh, influx of mental health issues that we've seen happening 
has a lot to do with what the government is doing to us from our food to the vaccinations to the air. Um, mm. So it's kind of like a combination where I kind of like I'm spiritually graduating through like I needed to learn the basics first because I wasn't raised in a religious household. I wasn't raised in religion at all. So I didn't learn the Bible till I was like 33. And so I kind of did all this later. And now I'm realizing, OK, I get the ba foundations, but how can I help people? Um, and really what happened for me is um, it was about 2010, 2011. I had been, um, I'm from Southern California and I had been working in the television industry, working for major networks like VH1 and MTV. And um, during that time, I just started to feel that there was something very dark about the industry that I worked in. You know, I wasn't in the Illuminati like a lot of people would think and not everybody in Hollywood's in the Illuminati. In fact, I was surrounded by people like that. But if you're kind of not like have, if you have good morals or like uh, a conscience or remorse, they don't want you to be a part of their club. So I was kind of always kept on the outside of things. And one day I just had this light bulb go off and I was casting like a game show or something terrible. I've mostly worked in reality TV. And then something just told me, hey, you got to stop. You have to walk away from this. So I took a little... Um, a journey my family my mom lives down in southern california my dad lives in northern california so i just hopped in my car and i just drove and this is like an 11 hour journey to go from the south to the north of california and during that time i started having all these really crazy spiritual things happening to me like i could kind of hear and see things that other people couldn't see i almost felt as i was being activated like something in my brain was awakening so this was all a true thing that happened to me over a couple of years. And um, while this awakening was happening to me, um, I actually experienced a parallel reality. And I didn't know about Mandela effect and parallel realities at the time. Um, and when I, was this just like 2011, 2012 your yes, timeline? The exact date was May 1st of 2011. Okay. And yeah. And so my first book i actually wrote an entire book about this my very first book i published in 2016 and it's called diary of an asset and people can just go on amazon and look at look for diary of an asset and i essentially wrote every single thing that happened to me over that year i wrote it in a character's name sophia snow but it was really about me and it explains a lot more in detail uh i was you know seeing like reptilians i was seeing aliens i was um leaving at one point i might have even had some type of a microchip implanted inside of me because i suddenly got like really smart you know i've always kind of been a kid with good grades or whatever yeah. but, but suddenly i was like super brain mode where i was like figuring out physics and geometry and weird historical stuff and it just was this crazy conglomeration of things and then one day I remember I came back from my father's house. I stayed up there with him about a week. And when I came home to my apartment, everything in my apartment kind of looked the same. But there was something like a little bit off about everything. Like maybe my books that were over here were suddenly over here, et cetera, et cetera. And um, lots of little clues piled up. And eventually I realized I was in like a parallel reality. Now it didn't last forever, it lasted about three days, but for about a good three days, I knew I was somewhere else and I did didn't know what to call it. Did people, people act acted, recognize people who weren't themselves? Yes, and it was very slight, again, you know just slight changes. And at the time I didn't know what to call it, but years later I figured it out, six years later, and it eventually brought me to my Mandela effect journey. But that's kind of what it started. It's so long to explain, but if people check out Diary of an Asset, I have that like, on Amazon ebook for like two bucks or something, but it's really interesting if anybody believes they might have been like a victim of MK Ultra or any type of governmental programs. Um, you might want to check out my full story because it's really long. <laughs> did you get so into the psychology <laughs> after? Did you get into psychology after you had discovered the Mandela effect or before? After, uh, after my first awakening, oh, okay. all the. Yeah, after the weird week of the parallel reality thing, I went straight into religion. So I spent really not two years, I spent about five years studying religion. And then in after I found about the Mandela effect, that was last year, um, I switched to psychology immediately. I had already met my theology requirements, but I was like, I'm, I'm like an ordained minister and everything. I was going to keep going. And I thought, no, I have to like help human humans specifically because people are so afraid of religion and don't understand it. 
So that's kind of what triggered me to switch over to psychology. I want to help mind control victims. That's my biggest hope for the future with what I'm doing right now. So I reckon you would say that Bible changes with the Mandela effect are huge to you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I wrote a whole chapter in my book about the Bible changes, and I just kind of skimmed over them. I touched on the lion and the lamb and the Lord's Prayer and stuff like that. But there was actually a section in my book, and I have it here. I just got to find the page. There's a really interesting um, thing that a lot of people I haven't seen draw attention to about the Bible changes. Um, and what that was is that, let me just find the page here. This book is 350 pages long. It's very it's a long read, <laughs> but the Mandela effect never ends. Yeah, but it, um, it's laid out really, really well. And we're going to touch on some of the major topics too after you're done with the Bible stuff. But the way you laid it out and you have emails from people and, and stuff like that, I thought, I think it's really good. You, really, I, good. Tried to, I tried to make it as research-based as possible. It's not a novel. You're not going to pick up this book and be like, oh, I'm being entertained. This is a research book because so many people yeah. said, no one's doing this in alphabetical order. No one's organizing this properly. We just have all these scattered videos all over the internet. And I thought, okay, well, I'll do that then, you know? And so one of the other things no one noticed was that um, in the King James Bible on page 172, there was over 500 words in the King James Bible that have changed meaning. So that's on page like 172 of the book. And I haven't heard anybody talk about that one yet because, because I had a religious background and was studying this in college. I'm not just learning it on my own. I'm in a university and they're teaching us how important what the meanings of scriptures are and what the words really mean. And when you change even one little thing, you change its complete meaning. So that's what made me so it. fascinated. The whole story around it, not just the sentence. You change one word, the whole paragraph, several paragraphs, the portion, that whole, that whole thing's changing. Absolutely. And, and, and first of all, in Deuteronomy, uh, I can't think of the scripture off the top of my head, but it's in Deuteronomy, they talk about no man should add or take away one single word from this book, or it will, it will basically, um, it will break the commandments that you've made with God. That's essentially what it says. So if anybody changes this book, it's complete blasphemy, it completely changes the meaning of the whole thing. And it becomes a human book with a human um, agenda rather than a spiritual book with a divine agenda. So that's really what fired me up the most about the Mandela effect for sure. All right. I'm going to ask you uh, a sort of a deep question. I was going to save it for a little later, but I'm going to ask it now. And, and okay. just before I ask this, I'm going to tell everybody, like, you know, when we're explaining the Mandela effect to people that don't know about it, you know, we don't want to maybe go with this question. But since we're all in the community here. And everybody probably wants to know. I got the impression from reading uh, parts of your book that you think it's possibly something divine. Um, I've been saying for a long time, I think it's our collective consciousness. I think it's possibly a sign from the creator. But there's also a lot of people out there that thinks it's man-made. They think it's CERN. I don't buy into that type of stuff. Wh what do you think? And I know maybe we can't prove it yet what's doing it. And it's just speculation, but it's good to have these conversations. And what's your opinion on what is causing this? Totally. I really like this question because there's so many people just so quick to dismiss this stuff. And a lot of the comments I used to get from trolls and negative people were, oh, people just misremember stuff all the time. Oh, that's psychology 101, blah, blah, blah. People misremember stuff. So I started like studying what is something called false memory syndrome. Syndrome. That's a real thing where people like even in, in, in witness testimonies and courts and stuff will misremember things based on certain stuff. So there is a little bit of truth to people misremembering things, but that's such a cop out to say that all of these changes are just because we're uneducated or we're misunderstanding or misremembering. I don't like that at all. So that's one of the reasons I dove really into the psychology thing. But I think there is to specifically answer your question. I think there's a twofold um, um, part to this whole CERN thing where people think CERN caused it. Well, it's probably a two-part thing because I do believe that CERN have the technology and they already have done this where when they went looking for the God particle, and this was 2011, by the way, when they went looking for the God particle, and that's the year I was waking up. Um, when they found that, I believe that's actually when they opened up like a portal or an entrance, an entryway or a door, if you will, to another dimension. So they were the ones that possibly just physically opened the door but they're not responsible for the effect. 
Now, if they opened the door and if supernatural beings were able to start entering into our atmosphere, and this is biblical too, because it, it like most people would think the evil guys are demons, like they talk about in the Bible, and God put them somewhere else away from us and said, you're not allowed to come into this reality. So the only mm -hmm. way these other beings could come in is if somebody else opened the door. So if Sir just opened the door up, that allowed all this negative divine energy to come through. And I believe it is a lot of these negative lower entities from another dimension. Um, and this is linked to AI as well, because I believe AI itself is a combination of these lower negative entities kind of mixed with technology that because they opened this door, now all this kind of supernatural divine stuff is coming through. And finally, having a more direct influence on humanity when before for negative entities to influence us, we'd have to like do black magic, do a seance, call in, you know, evil mm -hmm. entities or whatever. Now, I believe their main vehicle is Wi-Fi. I believe that these these entities are surging through the sky, through everybody's Wi-Fi, especially through this new 5G thing that they're forcing upon everybody. My dad has a funny name for them, and he calls them the Nano Nephilim. My dad is very awake, and he was like in the military, and he's seen it all. But he calls them Nano Nephilim because if you think about the Nephilim, were kind of the gods of old, the giants, the one who were supposed to have came into the daughters of men and actually created humanity. So if they now have a way to come back, these old gods, then the only way they could probably do it is through like nanotechnology, Wi-Fi things of that nature. So if CERN opened up the door, they allowed these guys to come in and they knew what they were doing. If CERN opened the door, it wasn't looking for no God particle. It was to let these guys have an entrance into our world. And that's what I strongly believe. Kind of oh, from yeah. like multiple, for as they, yeah, multiple they would, aspects of research kind of can, can show that, you know? Um. Okay. So if say a gateway was opened, like you said, yeah. and maybe like, uh, parallel universes or realities or whatever could kind of cross and intersect. What are your opinions on incremental changes? Like say you're watching the wizard of Oz and one day the scarecrow gets the gun, but then months later, then the tin man gets the wrench, these types of things. Uh, and what are your opinions on uh, Mandela effects that flip flop like the Apollo 13, the Flintstones, those type of things, which I'm sure you're aware of all of that. Yeah. Um, I've had it happen to me as well, where even I, what I, I made a video like last week reading, telling everybody that Pope Francis officially changed the Lord's Prayer. And I was reading my own book in the video. And as I'm reading reading it, the Lord's Prayer was changing again, like new stuff, like not the debts and debtors and trespasses. It was supposed to be like, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And as I'm reading it, it's like, your kingdom come, your will be done. And I don't even remember putting that in my own book. So I've seen this stuff happen a lot. And what I think that that, that is, is... Um, we're kind of slipping in and out of parallel realities. I was never like a science fiction person. So all this stuff to me, was very spiritual. I didn't think of it as science fiction. I thought, okay, there's definitely a world we can't see. There's stuff we can't explain. But I think what's happening is that we are, depending on perhaps our intention, depending on our vibrational frequency, depending on where we're at that day, our thoughts, our mind, we can switch in and out of different realities. So that's why one day a change can look one way. And then maybe the next day you're reading the same change and it's completely different. And I know we can't prove that it's, it's, and it's so hard to explain, but that's kind of the only thing that makes sense. Some days I'll look at the sun on a day where everything just feels light and nice. And the sun is like big, it's golden, it's beautiful. Then two days later, I could wake up and everything feels dark. You know, uh, I've got bills piling up. I've got clients emailing me cross or mad at me. I've got da, 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 da. And I look out the sun and it looks like a big light bulb. And so I'm like, am I in a different place today? You know, so I, it's just really small things like that. You can definitely observe when the reality around you is changing. Even if everything looks the same, it can slightly change. And I think that is a uh, proof that we're, we're shifting in and out of realities quickly and we are like walking human antennas as it is we are made of electromagnetic frequencies so if we're Absolutely. walking around we're portals we are essentially a portal and if we focus on something enough we can probably travel through that so that's my theory on why we flip-flop things have you ever and this is kind of getting off mandela for a second but we're going to talk about you know a few topics have you ever looked into lucid dreams what's your opinion on that Yes, um, I've had a lot of lucid dreams. I have them almost every night, to be honest. I either go through months where I won't have any dreams at all, or I will have nothing but lucid dreams. 
Um, we studied this in psychology as well. It's known as the uh, parapsychology or paranormal psychology division. And um, many people believe that uh, lucid dreams are your consciousness and yourself. Is it again, traveling to another reality? It may be another dimension. You know, there's parallel realities and then there's different dimensions. They're totally different. So a parallel reality is like a carbon copy of our world where everything's slightly off like a clone. Um, where different dimensions are kind of like Dante's Inferno. I don't know if you've heard of that book where Dante talks about. I don't know. I don't, know what's, what, don't really know what it's about. So Yeah, what do you it's, mean? It's, it's an old book where this um, philosopher named Dante wrote. I don't even know how old it is. It's been a, a long time ago. Uh, but he kind of wrote about hell. And he called Dante's Inferno was all about these different levels of hell. I don't know if it was seven or nine different levels. But he had like different levels where like the really bad guys were way down here and the, the, maybe just the liars were here. And the slightly less sins kind of went up and up. So that's one example of how I believe we have different um, dimensions. Now from Earth, our dimensions start here, but then they go up. Or like the hell dimensions go down like nine layers. I think it's nine. Nine layers down. And then we have like nine heavenly dimensions that, that go up. Earth starts as number one. And then you can kind of go up higher and higher and higher. So when we're in our dream state, we have the capacity to kind of travel to any dimension. We could slip down to the lower ones or we could slip up to the higher ones. But if we're fully conscious, that means that we are literally traveling to somewhere else. So that's what I believe lucid dreaming is, is our consciousness mm -hmm. getting either, pu either pulled to by something else or we are choosing to travel to that other uh, dimension, essentially. So that's kind of what my research has told me. You feel yeah. like we're more connected? I do. I feel like we're in our dream state. We are definitely more connected. Yes, because we don't have all the walls up that we have during the day. The veil is up very tight when we're conscious, and it's completely gone when we're asleep. So we're less judgmental. We're also more susceptible to harassment and things like that as well. So that can be dangerous. Um, but, yeah, I definitely think that's what it is. We're, we're, we're traveling to different dimensions in our sleep every single night. So, like you said, parallel realities, different dimensions are two different things. So you don't think it's maybe directly tied to the Mandela. You think it's its own its own little thing. Not its own little I, thing. It's not little, I think, but I, some sort of yeah, connection. I think there probably is. And that's the thing. It's so hard to prove all this stuff. And that's why I thought for me to get into psychology, maybe eventually we can find ways to prove this stuff through um, like sleep studies where you film people in their sleep and you have like, you know, brain scanning devices on them to measure their brain activity. There's got to be, we are so scientifically advanced. How can we not figure this out at this point? So if someone else doesn't figure it out, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going for a full PhD with my degree. So by the end, I'll be a doctor. And if I have to, I'll create some kind of test <laughs> that can prove this stuff because we've got to be able to explain what's going on here. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be so impossible, but there's got to be a connection between the parallel realities the different dimensions and the Mandela effect. Absolutely. And um, you are in Norway, correct? You've been there yes. for several years. You told me. Yeah. Now, a lot of people I talk to about the Mandela effect that happened to not be in the United States have a lot of time, uh, trouble finding local Mandela effects, Mandela effects with their products, their media, this type of thing. Mm. What have you noticed over there? Same, same thing or, and, and what is, why do you think that is? That's a great question. Um, now, things like cars are a constant in every place. I've lived all over the world. So car, you know, car manufacturers, that's something pretty common that's worldwide, whereas like food and products and stuff may not be. Now, mm -hmm. the, the, the Volkswagen thing, my mm -hmm. husband and I found out about the Mandela effect on the same day. And we went around, we knew the Volkswagen logo was crazy with the, with the split inside of it. So we went driving around <laughs> in parking lots and looking for Volvos and we kept seeing the split on every logo. We were like, oh my God. He's like, even I used to own a Volvo. I mean, sorry. Yeah, Volvo or VW, oh, right. VW, Volkswagen. Sorry I, sorry, I kept saying Volvo. Sorry, yeah. Volvo changed too. That's what I was thinking. Uh, but yeah, Volkswagen. Got, it looks like the male symbol now. It's got that crazy thing in it. Mm -hmm. That's it the symbol from odd. Mars. It looks as odd as the uh, Staples Center logo. <laughs> oh, that one drives me crazy too. So I'm from Los Angeles and the Staples, uh, Center is like a big part of downtown. I've seen it a million times. Uh, but Did yeah, you, Volkswagen, that was crazy. Was um 
was so you do see uh, those international things, obviously, but as far as local food and products and stuff, is is there not much? Now with the product with the products and stuff, um, now Norway, we're so far up, we're basically at the North Pole. They don't have very many local products. Most things have to be uh, shipped in from other countries because we don't it's so cold here. Right now it's like 20 below zero outside. So we can't grow crops, we can't grow food. We don't have a lot of the same food. So it was a lot harder for us to prove things like that. But one very, very, very strange thing I did notice was uh, my husband was kind of raised in a religious family here. He's, he's more spiritual like me, but his family were very heavily um, involved in the church. So when mm -hmm. the Bible started changing, um, um, I was going through all my Bibles. I had many of them in English and all of them had changed. And so then I said, hey, honey, do you have any of those Norwegian Bibles laying around? And he had one that he was given when he was uh, like his confirmation when he was 13. And he goes, yeah, here it is here. And so I speak Norwegian as well. I kind of had to learn it. I'm not crazy fluent, but I can, you know, understand it. So I opened up the Bible and I found the Lord's Prayer. And what was so crazy was the Lord's Prayer had not changed in the Norwegian Bibles. And we found like four of them throughout the house. We checked all of them and it was still the old way with the trespasses and all, basically also lion and the lamb everything was unchanged it was all the old way in the norwegian does it still Bible. Remain unchanged? does it still remain unchanged or did it just hit kjv first then these other ones and eventually make it there that's the thing i don't know because these bibles were so old and his were, were completely unchanged and they are still to this day i've made some videos about it a long time ago i've been making mandela effect videos for two and a half years now so somewhere in there i've shown it yeah, it stayed unchanged, but all my KJVs, all, um, even I had versions that were like, I had a Jehovah's Witness Bible, I had a Mormon Bible, like different versions just to study them. All of them had changed except the Norwegian Bible. So I don't know what that's all about, but I thought that was pretty cool that that, that their Bible anyway went unchanged. So Americans probably did this. <laughs> you know, they own all the pop culture. Hollywood probably has a lot to do with this. They own all the movie titles, the music titles. They're witches. They're they are witches and warlocks and they do black magic. I wish I could sugarcoat it, but that's really what's going on. So a lot of it may have to do with black magic and when these bibles were created, like Queen Elizabeth herself should not still be alive. She's one of the darkest people in the world. And if you go in the New King James Bibles, that's also in my book too. If you go to the yeah, beginning, now, right? yeah, she's got a whole dedication page. It's crazy. There's like this several page thing about how the you know Queen Elizabeth is the high and mighty queen above everybody, and that's in the first page of the Bible. What does the queen have to do with God? Like all these weird things, I thought were very strange. Some people don't even remember seeing that insert of the dedication to. Queen Elizabeth until I mentioned it and then they all went running and it's there it should be in just about everybody's King James Bible the very 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 beginning after like the first blank page should be a dedication to Queen Elizabeth and if you read it it's very odd so I think that is a, a spell in itself that first page and then maybe if you put a spell in something it allows it to be manipulated longer down the line so this could be some witchcraft stuff too have you taken any of your Bible knowledge and approached or called any pastors and whatnot? Like we've seen some of the calls on Mandela Effect on YouTube, like uh, Child of Light's channel. She called the guy and he swears for 30 years. He's writing. He knows it's the lion and the lamb. And then she makes him pull out the Bible. And then he just like gets the update and backtracks. Have you have you gone through this these conversations? Yes, because I was in the middle of my theological degree when I found out about this stuff. So I was a little afraid. I was always kind of a little more eccentric you know, than a lot of my classmates where I wasn't raised Christian and I didn't really identify as one until way later. So I thought, God, I don't want to come in here and ruffle feathers, but I had to ask. So we have these kind of group forums where we will post about our topics and classmates will chat back and forth. And I just said, hey, how do you guys remember the Lord's Prayer? Just to kind of throw it out there. And then multiple people responded and every single person responded with trespasses. So I went, huh. Yeah. Well, that's really strange check this out so then i like copy and pasted whatever version i could find like online and put it on there about the debts and debtors and the in earth instead of on earth as as it is in heaven it's in earth and people were just like what what oh 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 we know what that is that's a catholic bible they all started saying because my 
university was a Christian oh, yeah. university. Oh, yeah. It's always, it's always a translation issue or reissue or a download issue to these people. And it's like, no, go in your own house. It's so crazy because yes. I tell people – um. Like when I tell them some of the words that have popped up in the, oh, well, that's, you know, that's metaphorical for this and that. I'm like, but the point is the word wasn't in there and now no. it is. Yes. I don't like the cop outs. I don't like, they were so quick to brush me off and, oh, Stasha, you're so uneducated. You have a lot to learn. You know, you weren't raised in the church. We were, we know better. So a lot of people just laughed me off, told me I was uneducated. I'm like, okay, but I'm not looking at a Catholic Bible right now. I'm looking at a King James and it says the same thing, you know, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just a lot of, you know, hustle, bustle, you know, excuses, traveling around the, the topic, but nobody would really address it. So I felt that that was another clue. And I found that most of the judgments I really received um, about the Bible changes were from Christians, actually, more than anybody. I've been treated more judgmentally by fellow Christians or people that call themselves mm -hmm. oh, that than yeah. people who have that are atheists or even Satanists. They're more believing what I have to say. Well, well, these, well here's where they'll go at you. They'll be like, well, the word of God can't change. And it's like, whether you want to say, I tell people this, whether you want to believe it's the word of God or the word of man or the word of, of whatever you think, you know, how the Bible came into existence, the word is changing. So you can say the word of God can't change, but if it's the word of God to you, well, the word of God did change. So now what are you going to do about it? Exactly. And that's why I made a video a couple of weeks ago about Pope Francis. He, he literally changed the Lord's prayer. It was December 8th of 2017. He changed the line that was about, um, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He thought it should be changed, uh, changed to, uh, do not us, do not let us fall into temptation or just a slight change. Right. But he was saying this, he goes, I believe that should be changed because our, my God and my father would never lead anyone into temptation. So, so that was written wrong. And it's like, okay, first of all, Francis, you're not God. I don't care if somebody made you the Pope. You have no right to go back and change words of the most sacred prayer in all the Bible because you think it means something different. Like he's re he officially legally changed it with the roman catholic church over a year ago so now any church in rome or anywhere that's catholic has to say it this new way and i mm -hmm. think that's crazy like who does he think he is so not only has the mandela effect changed the lord's prayer but now they're officially changing it so this just double verifies that they are attacking something for a reason that power that prayer must be really powerful or they wouldn't be touching it i think it it's powerful i think Prayer is Whoa. way more powerful than witchcraft. And that's what scares a lot yeah. of these witches and wizards because they have to use all these supplies and ingredients and blood and blah, blah, blah. And we can just pray. When you got faith and you just pray, miracles happen. So they're trying really hard to change this prayer for a reason. I, I absolutely believe that. When you started um, realizing the Mandela effect, now we talked about your awakening moment, um, the parallel realities that you realize in your apartment. Um, yeah. But what was the first Mandela effect? Like, you know, for me, it was Berenstein and, and JFK. And, and, and you know, later on, there were bigger ones to me, like, you know, C-3PO, Black Tom, Statue of Liberty, South mm -hmm. America. Those are, those are like near the top of my list, Ed McMahon. But like, what was the first one that grabbed you? Like, for me, it was Berenstein and JFK. And I'm just like, no way. And there's no way that I'm misremembering this. What was it for well, you? Well, well, how it actually came across my path, and this I talk about in the book as well. In chapter one, I have a book, uh, a Part of the book that's called the smoking gun and what happened was one of my um clients i've been working as a psychic for about eight or almost 10 years now ever since i left hollywood been about eight years and i like i told you when i woke up i suddenly now have these abilities i never had and they're very psychic in nature so i started doing psychic readings for people and all this different stuff and i still do them to this day i do you know healings for people i do past life readings i can go into akashic records all this stuff came later so one of my personal clients that I'd done readings for um, reached out to me in an email and was like, Sasha, I know you're busy. I know you have a lot going on, but this crazy story happened to me. And there's this new phenomenon that's, you know, just blowing up. It's blown my mind. Please, can you take a look at this? Here's my story. And if you want and you feel guided, please, you know, make a video about it or maybe even write a book about it. And I was like, oh, I have so much going on right now. So I checked it out and his story to me was all about the Berenstain Bears. 
And I was like reading his letter and he's talking about how him and his wife and daughter went to this museum and <clears throat> they had a display about the Berenstain Bears there. And that was the first time he noticed it. When he saw Stain, yeah, he was like- This one's in your book. I saw this in your book. I read this. The, the yes. Mess yeah. Yes. So he reached out to me. I read the story, read the email, went online, sat there with my husband, and we just went through video after video after video watching about the Medellin because for me- I grew up reading the Berenstain Bears. You know, I'm I'm 40 years old, so that's my timeline. I was born in 78. I'm an 80s baby. So I was my mom was reading those books to me every night as a kid. I loved them. You used to be able to get them in the mail. You get like a pack of like 10 of them. But it was always Bernstein or Berenstain. It was Stein. And I and when I looked at Berenstain, I went, okay, now you're messing with me. Because as kids, yeah. we would make we would make jokes like, ah, you got a stain or you know, like the word stain means something different. And also it was based off of these authors, Stan and Jan Berenstein, who were Jewish. And that's a very Jewish name it, to have S-T-E-I-N, Stein, and like Goldstein and all these different things. So I went, okay, now this is really weird. And then I found some, some residuals people had found different spellings of it, like from back in the 80s, like, you know, Toys R Us catalogs and stuff like that. And where they still had the EIN and I was like, oh, whoa. So that just blew up everything for me. If I, I didn't grow up reading the Berenstain Bears, whatever, but I grew up reading it every night. I remember Brother Bear and Sister Bear and they're part of my childhood. So that absolutely blew the door open for me. So I have to thank my client, David, to this day. Like, thank you so much for showing me about this because it changed my whole life. I actually found out about the Mandela effect in like September of 2016. And I had already published this book. And again, it's like 350 pages of research. 10 months later, I had it completed and on Amazon, July of, of 2017. So that's how dedicated and how convinced and how affected I was. I put all my time and effort into it on top of being in religion school and doing all this stuff. And I just went, this is something huge. This is really, really important. And, and just the rest is history. I just became totally obsessed with finding answers and we still don't have any proof. We still don't know who's doing it or why. But we, have proof. Never... we have proof it's happening. We have proof it's happening for sure. We have we have loads of proof it's happening. Totally. We have so much residual evidence. That's what's awesome. So I'll just I'll keep asking um, questions and I'll keep writing these books until we get to the bottom of things. And you know, I've I've tried to I tried to shop this book out. I'd already published two books, one on animal communication and one on my my awakening story on Amazon, I thought, okay, I can get a publisher to pick up my third book. Nobody would touch this book with a 10 foot pole. They thought it was crazy. They're like, if you mm. want to write about parallel realities, make it a science fiction book. No, that's not what this is. This is truth, not fiction. And so nobody helped me. So I ended up having to reach out to everybody on YouTube and just saying, Hey, do you guys want to help me fund this book? Because self-publishing is a lot cheaper than, you know, publishing a full Pledge novel can be like five thousand dollars. So I did the research on Amazon. I'm like, hey, we can put out this whole book for like a grant. Everybody came through on the community, small donations of like five dollars, ten dollars, whatever. When I told everybody nobody would publish the book, the whole community came together and made small donations. And I was able to do everything from like the artwork to the layout to the marketing, everything for from the community. So I have a big dedication section in the book. Probably lots of your subscribers. They were all people that donated. And I just, the community came together. They're like, nobody's willing to sit through all this research and organize it. And if you are, we want to help back you up. So this whole book was really made thanks to the community and the support from all of you. And I know most of us don't have money, like everyone's struggling, but to see $5, $1, $10 coming from everybody else who was affected and they, then them sending me their own stories, I went, okay, this is awesome. This is like divine we're getting this book out no matter what. And so I just had to like get it out there because I just wanted the world to know. And when it came out on Amazon, it trended at number one for about two weeks in the category that it was in. I couldn't believe it. I'm, you know, none of my other books ever were, did well, but this topic, it touched so many people. And so I feel that um, now I'm writing book two and I have still have a, a GoFundMe campaign going for that book. If we can get everybody to kind of pitch into that book as well, then I have a second volume that is, I'm already getting like this big and it's all the pop culture stuff, like the movies, the songs, oh. cartoons, all the stuff that's more memorable for people. So that's one of the things I'm working on now because 
if we keep putting this out, they won't be able to get away with it for very long. Or they'll have to be more tricky about their approach, I think. Um, you talked about, you know, you had enough to do the book and the artwork and everything. And one of the things that really impressed, impressed me was like some of the artwork and diagrams in the anatomy section to show, mm. you know, how things have changed and what they used to be. And um, by just by looking through that section and reading some of it, I, I take it th those are really huge to you too. Do you want to talk about the anatomy? Yeah. Oh, the anatomy. My, my first, my first life career was, um, I was actually working in nursing. I was a respiratory therapist, not an RN, but a respiratory therapist. And so I worked, you know, in the medical field from the age of 18, I was in school. And so I had to learn anatomy and physiology, like had to memorize every bone in the body, had to memorize all the muscles and skeletons and, and everything. Um, and now it has been many years since I've been in the medical field. I stopped in probably like the year 2001, but all that is like muscle memory to you when you've already gone through school and you memorize this stuff. So when I started seeing the anatomy changes, I was blown away. The, the weirdest parts of the anatomy changes for me um, w was the heart because I worked in respiratory. And respiratory is heart, lungs, and breathing. That's all we deal with. And the heart was never in the center of your chest. Absolutely not in no. a way. And that's the main thing that really freaked me out. I went, whoa, because I even physically put my hand over my heart. And you know, like when we're kids in America, you put your right of hand over your heart. Yeah. Pledge of Allegiance. You started every school day that way. You do it automatically. You don't even think. And when I, even to this day, I feel I don't have a heartbeat there. I used to feel it. Now I feel it almost more like down here in the solar plexus. That's where I feel my heartbeat now, which is crazy. So that the, the heart shifting to the middle, I thought that was crazy. A lot of the bones changing, like the number of bones they say we have now was not what I learned when I was in school. Um, lots of weird things. So I had a real background with that one too. So I reached out to a lot of people to write that section of the book about the anatomy, people who had had a background. Uh, in fact, Taryn Lupo, he used to do a lot of these um, live streams from the Mandela effect over the past couple of years. He's a doctor. Of, chiro of chiropractic and so chiropractors really have to know the bones and he had done a video on this a couple years ago and it got like a hundred thousand views everybody freaked out because he knew all these new bones and muscles and everything had shifted and so i kind of interviewed him about that and used some of his research as well so yeah that was crazy too i mean how can you deny your anatomy changing that's like a physical change it's not a book Ooh, change. that's a huge one too because people people love to say oh it's trivial shit and blah 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 but no the reason people bring up music and movies and stuff because most people don't know their geography their anatomy and this right. types of stuff but there's a lot of huge things when things are changing under your skin how can you say it's a psyop and it's it's, it's right. people online like your, your structure under your skin and your bones has changed. even your bones have changed like the eye sockets the ribs i mean all of it the, the legs the, it's, it's crazy it's crazy so when yeah. you do these um i know a lot of people reached out to you because you before each section it seems you like you have like emails in from people or their mm -hmm. little stories when people realize you were talking about the anatomy changes a lot did people send you their stories about i've had shoulder pain what do you think about it this type of thing Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm a little embarrassed to say that my email, I, I gave my public email address to people two years ago in one of my videos and said, please send me your stories. I have about 4,000 emails in my inbox that I have not responded to people about yet. Now, these are all personal Mandela effect stories. And I've skimmed through a lot of them. I just haven't had time to respond. A few people I have. And I know it's two years sounds crazy. But there was such a response from everybody when I put up my very first video that I almost can't ca keep up. I, in fact, I'm going to probably write another version of the Mandela Effect book, like another volume, volume three, after the second one, which is more pop culture, where I just call it uh, the Mandela Effect personal stories. And I'm going to respond to every person, get their permission, like, hey, can I put your personal story into this book? And I'll probably just kind of organize it in order of effects. But I'm telling you, at least 4,000 people that have had Amazing. one, if, if not every Mandela effect you can think of. And I have about 4,000 subscribers. So I've basically gotten an email for almost every single one of my subscribers telling me their own personal story. So this is not just me and you. It's not just a few of us. It's not just the conspiracy theorists. I've had emails from people in their 60s, in their teen, teenagers, 12 and 13, that already noticed things like Pokemon changing freak them out with the black tail missing and 
So everyone from teenagers up to, you know, elderly people, not 60s, not elderly, but you know what I'm saying? All ages are saying, whoa, yeah, I'm affected. This is absolutely happening. And then they all, all have their own little version. So that's Isn't something it I'm yeah, from the young people. I, I like when I see, uh, I notice with Mandela effect more so than a lot of other communities or so-called conspiracies people look into, um, mm -hmm. you know, different fields of research. There's a lot of young people, teenagers doing Mandela effect videos. And I think it's awesome. I love watching it. I think so too. Um, I have a 12 year old, a 19 year old and a 21 year old, and all of them are Mandela affected in different ways, just depending on their generation. So all of my kids are like, Oh yeah, mom, like, both of my kids couldn't believe the Star Wars stuff. Like my older kids, the 19 and 21 year old, they're like, come on. How many times have we watched Star Wars, mom? Of course it's Luke, I am your father. Or of course C-3PO is all gold. And then my 12 year old. Everybody knows C-3PO is all gold. That's why I feel <laughs> even the people that are oblivious to this and push it mm -hmm. off and ignore it. I did a poll where I put two pictures of them, one with the gold and one with the silver. And I just asked people, what do you remember growing up? This all gold or gold with one silver leg? And I didn't put it in Mandela Effect groups. I put it on my public wall so I could get like oh. a more biased response. It was like 95% to 5%. There was like 60 votes versus two for all gold. So everybody knows he was all gold and everybody knows Ed McMahon worked for Publishers Clearinghouse. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's almost like... And when people don't know the old way, I'm like, are you a clone? Are you who you say you are? That's when I start doubting people in general. It's like, come on, we've been living on the same earth together all this time. How don't you know this stuff? And again, it's like crazy. And like I said, like even my 12 year old, he's like, uh, yeah, Pokemon definitely had a black tail and uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Like he'll start looking for Mandela effects now because it just blows his own mind. And so from 12 to uh, to 90 years old or 80 years old, I'm getting responses from people. And I think it's awesome. I think we need to start thinking outside of the box. I think we need to believe that there is an invisible world that we can't see. And it's not necessarily all negative. Some of it's divine. Some of it's negative. That's why I wear a lot of black and white. It's kind of like there's two sides to everything. And I think if we all come together and be aware and stop being like slaves to these things, the smartphones just running around all day lost in another dimension, then we're going to be a lot more tapped into changes that will happen in the future and we can take control of it. I think our minds are super powerful and the magic of believing is something that cannot even be measured. So if we work together on these things and call these fools out, then we can make a change. We are really powerful. Humans are way more powerful oh, than we give ourselves That's credit. why there's a, huge, there's a huge agenda to tell you things like you only use 10% of your brain and all this crap. It's like, come on, man. Right. And, and people also have to realize when they say, oh, well, that can't change. How can something in your possession change? That's impossible. And even if you don't get to show them, them just saying that's impossible. Well, it's like, we have. You, it's impossible to you know, when you apply the rules of reality that we were given, but that's all bull crap. Right. We've been told. You know what I mean? There's so much more. They're, they're totally, there's a total agenda, total agenda to hide any type of spiritual side by mainstream science and this and whatnot. I mean, total. There's a, that's a huge agenda from them to hide a creator, hide a spiritual side. And I could go on forever about that, but I don't want to get lost on in your interview. So No, um, no, but I, I, I like what you just said because that's true. Let's just look at what media has done in the past four years. God used to be all over the place. It was okay to be Christian. It was okay to pray. It was okay to talk about God. Maybe not in school, but, you know, on TV, he would be referenced to. You'd say, thank God, or, or you know, whatever. In the past several years, maybe not even four years, like the past two years, there is this influx of Satanism, of witchcraft, of all these other dark arts that, like, everybody's just accepting as normal. Also, there's a lot of other levels to this I don't want to get into. I don't want to offend anybody. But there's a lot of changes to what, you know, we – we believe in like family, like women now, like this new generation, they believe that getting married is, is, is like ruining your life. Oh no, I need to be an independent woman. And it's like, Oh, they do that on purpose. That's an agenda to split the family. I agree a hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. It's like breaking up of the nuclear family, all the influx of the gender changes. I'll just say that. I don't want to get into it because everybody's got their own background, but I don't like how the gender changes are being forced upon everybody and the Satanism is being forced upon everybody and breaking up the nuclear family, accepting abortion, all these things. And people probably won't like that. I'm talking about stuff like that, but let's just take it from arm's length and let's see 
how long has this been a thing? Not very long. It feels like in the past couple of years, the media is shoving all this stuff down our throat, like to be independent, to have an abortion, to change your gender, to not be married, all the things that used to be foundational to being human beings, which was to create life and to share life. Uh, that's what our creator did for us. And if you don't, if you don't believe in Jesus, that's fine. If you believe in Brahma or whoever, fine. But you have to realize something created all of this. Do you think we just the Big Bang? We just popped up one day and made clothing and made industries and figured out how to talk. Oh, no, we we had so divine intervention the whole time. So ridiculous. Yeah, we came out of an explosion that came from nothing. I mean, just. <laughs> It's, it's there's, there, there's there's no proof of the Big Bang either. I have a science background as well, not like a degree, but oh, absolutely not. They have no proof of that, or photos of space, or anything like that. I'm sure we could probably talk about this stuff forever. <laughs> oh, you know me. I'm all about that. There's absolute. That's all absolute garbage from science. I mean, they, real science is good when real science is applied and you use the scientific method. But the stuff that mainstream science just pushes, and you're supposed to believe it, coming from mainstream science, NASA, all these people are known liars and just because somebody has a lab coat doesn't mean that they're telling you the truth it doesn't mean that they're more intelligent than you either not mm -hmm. at all and in many cases that just means they're more indoctrinated and i won't say that's across the board because there are smart people that are scientists and whatnot but when they're basing all their theories off of other theories they use theories to prove other theories without any facts in between it's absolutely like a just a circular conversation it's crazy and then when the absolute basis of their foundation that they're doing everything off of is false everything is going to stem down and be you know that's the thing and they they think just because they work for nasa or like let's look at bill nye the science guy that guy's an actor okay i grew up in hollywood he was a bit actor doing bit parts back in the day and then when he has a presence same with Neil deGrasse tyson He's like an actor. All these guys that are the face of, of astrophysics right now, they're not even real scientists. Now, I do, I do know Neil deGrasse Tyson has a background in, in education, but I'm saying they're using him as a face. They're using these guys yeah, to put their agenda course. out. And like the real scientists, they're not on camera. They're like totally awkward. They don't want to be videotaped or do interviews or they're in a lab all day. You know what I mean? So we can't even. I, I can't stand those. I cannot stand Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse and Brian <laughs> Cox, and Bill Rogan. I mean, these guys, they're literally working hand in hand with mainstream science and everybody else to basically enslave humanity. One of the biggest things I think that they're yeah. afraid of, it, it, is, it isn't just waking up to the, choose your topic, Mandela effect, flat earth, 9-11, vaccines, chemtrails, whatever it is. They're, they're most concerned with us realizing that we are all connected with our consciousness, us realizing that they aren't the biggest kid on the block. They're probably they're, something created us, you know, yeah. and they, they want to repress that as much as they can. And I feel like all these things you talked about with the breaking up the family and pushing the Satanism and all that, that's like a psychological operation to repress us. They don't need to do it with force or with guns and with bombs. They control Absolutely. the media. It's they control slow. The, school, the media. They control the yeah. schools. They control they can put something in the schools and in 30 years, that's a fact to everybody because your, your generations have passed on and whatnot and they just rewrite history. With, with Even without a Mandela effect, even without a Mandela effect, they're rewriting history like that way, and, you know? They're doing it like really slow so it's not obvious, you know, like the slow integration of all these changes and that's what's scary about it because there even is a saying from Jim Morrison is, he who controls the media controls the minds or something like that. Whoever controls the media controls your mind. And it controls the thoughts of everybody. And it's so true. Look at like CNN, look at all the political stuff. I've never seen such an upheaval in psychosis post an election in my entire lifetime. I voted four times or five times in my life. There is so much psychological operations going on from, th from the news to the politics to music, God, music videos. I can't even watch them anymore. They're just so dark, they're so evil. Rappers have like turned into the new rock star Satanist. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. The, whole rap. The, the symbology it, and everything. That, and, and I'm not a type of person that looks too much into symbolism, the numerology, because I know some of it can be a stretch and whatnot, and you get a little lost in it. But they're throwing up blatant satanic things in the videos like it's just way over the top like you can't say this is accidental these hand gestures are all accidental and all this i mean this is just too much yeah there was one recently with a guy called young thug and little uzi vert and i think the song was called up just up up the whole entire video just starts off with a girl with a pentagram upside down on her face 
horns on her head, like not even trying to hide it before. Like people like Jay-Z would be like, Ova, you know, he'd throw it up real quick. And then everyone would have to dissect it for months on end. Cause he'd just do a quick symbol. Now, literally the video just starts off with nothing but satanic and Illuminati symbolism. It's like, these are the songs that our children are listening to. These are the, the artists that are influencing our kids. Now, when I grew up, hip hop was like Easy E and NWA and stuff like that. But they weren't good guys either, <laughs> good influences. But they were real gangsters. Like they were being themselves. Now I feel like everybody in this new generation is like trying to be cool, trying to be trying too hard to be different. And it's mm -hmm. obvious that their managers and their record labels are pushing this agenda for a bigger purpose. I guarantee you half these rappers don't like the clothes they wear. They don't like the songs they sing. They don't like any of the yeah, singles in the video. I wouldn't like them. I wouldn't like them skinny jeans. Either that they wear. <laughs> no, I like they're doing what they are told to do. The minute you sign on the line, you're no longer in control of your creativity or your message. So that's scary too. So it's in every aspect from, from schools, to religion, to music, you know, everything is being controlled right now. And I tell people, one of the things I pray for a lot is that technology will just go down for a little while, like not a long time, but like long enough for people to get out of their house, walk to their neighbor's house, you know, you know, do something outside, go yeah. grab some food, like just get back to basics. We are so revolved around our internet, our devices and, and let, letting the world tell us what, what we should think and what we should like and shouldn't like if we didn't have the media i don't think half the people in america would hate donald trump so much you know this is just an example and many people could argue me on that but i'm saying if they didn't spend all day long on these news channels bash 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 bashing him probably people would look for the good in this guy like he's he's not even taking a paycheck for his job right now he doesn't get paid for this everyone overlooks all the positive and oh let's just focus on the negative so it makes you wonder why they want everybody to hate him so much there's got to be an agenda behind that he used to be the biggest reality star in the world half the rappers used to write songs about how they wanted to be like donald trump and now he's the enemy so why is all this happening someone is controlling mind control they are mind controlling our minds and they're telling us what to think feel and believe and it's just gone too far and that's the Mandela effect too so it's just another symptom of it so I know you said you only have about an hour and you know, there's a couple of questions I need to close with, but before I do, there's two topics in your book that I want you to address real quick, which sure. however, however you, you want to take, or if you want to speed it up, cause you have to get going, whatever. I want to ask you about the astrological signs changing. And I want to ask mm -hmm. you your opinions on geography and what the biggest geography changes for you are. Okay. Now when it came to astrology, that one blew my mind. Um, when I was actually waking up spiritually, I used to follow this guy on YouTube, and I don't know if he's there anymore. Um, his energy just kind of changed a little bit, and I stopped watching his stuff. But he was called um, Ra Imhotep, and he his channel was called The 13th Sign or 13 Signs Astrology. And mm -hmm. anyone around 2011, 2012 will totally remember this guy. But he was the first one to tell everybody about the 13th sign. And um, no one really acknowledged that because – since we've had like the Gregorian and Greek way all these years, everybody just goes by the basic 12 signs of the Zodiac. But before everything was changed back in Babylonian times, when astrology was actually created, we had a 13th sign, which happened in the beginning of December. And that was the 13th sign known as a fucus. Um, he's also known as like the serpent. That's his um, constellation. The sky looks like a serpent, um, but they erased him from our, our, our Zodiac signs all these years. And then for some reason, NASA, I'm just trying to find it in my book now, somewhere NASA changed it. It was in uh, 2016, I think. Yeah, September 2nd, 2016, NASA yeah, well, officially they, changed. They got it wrong mm -hmm. for all these years, like 88% of the people have the wrong signs. Yeah, so what do like, they have they approached you and been like, "Hey, I like I'm a Libra, but now I'm a whatever," because I don't I don't really follow that. I don't I don't know. I'm not gonna pretend. But like, did they ever <laughs> approach you? Are people just oblivious to it? Are they like, "Oh, well, I've always been this." It's just like all well, the other men. Well, I, I'm friends with some astrologers on YouTube that I've known like personally for a long time, and I've asked them about it. And for some reason, they're not blown away. They're like, "Oh, well, there's always been the 13th sign, and if NASA finally acknowledges it, that's fine." I go, "But then wait." 
all your readings are based on the 12 sign. So don't you need to go back then and change all your research? And they're kind of like, oh, but yeah, but like that's a new change. It'll take forever for people to get used to it. I'm like, but no. So if, if astrology is your job, and this is what they you They sound do, like not that fucking serious about their job. <laughs> many people laughed it off. And the other one too that drove me nuts was the freaking sea goat. The Capricorn one. Oh, that Capricorn. With, with the, with the, with the, oh I saw that. Is, and is that the one that had the mermaid tail on it now? Or is that another one I'm mixing it up with? Yes, that was it. Now, the Capricorn was always symbolized by a goat, like a mountain goat, normal with four legs, walking up a hill. Now he's what's known as a sea goat. So if you go look up Capricorn online, you'll see a goat with a mermaid's cool. tail. <laughs> <laughs> a sea goat. So I put pictures of that in the book, actually. I have some before and afters in the astrology section where I show people like, there, now he's a sea goat. Like I've heard of mermaids, I've heard of goats, I've heard of mystical creatures, but never in my life have I heard of a sea goat. Are you kidding me? So apparently Capricorn's always been a sea goat. Makes no sense at all. Um, and then we have this 13 sign. Apparently has always been a thing, but no one paid attention to it. My daughter was a Sagittarius before, but according to this, she's in the 13th sign now. So it's like you can't go 2,000 years teaching people something and then suddenly, oh, we made a mistake. It's like the Pope changed in the Lord's Prayer. Ah, uh, God made a mistake. Uh, this is what he meant to say. Well, who do these people think they are? What, what does history even mean anymore if anybody can just go and change and say and do whatever suits their agenda? I just think it's really obvious we're being manipulated. Yeah. So what about geography? Yeah, I know you have a whole section on geography. For me, I mean, there's just, I mean, we could go on about geography. We could do, we could do many episodes just on geography. It keeps changing. There's hundreds, if not thousands of geography changes, but there's obviously the huge ones like South America, the Panama Canal, Cuba. I mean, what, what is it for you? What are your big geography ones? For me, the biggest geography one was Baja California by a million miles. What the heck is Baja, Baja California now? It looks insane. It's crazy, uh, right? It was never that long. I grew up in in San Diego, actually, which is like I, I lived in Hollywood later. That's where I like lived as an adult. But as a child, I lived in San Diego. We are on the border of Tijuana and San Diego. Like that's just how it is. We would go down to Baja California all the time when I was a child. There's no way it was that long. Not to mention how much was geography shoved down our throats when we were kids in school. We had to draw maps upon maps upon maps. I have never seen anything like it. When I looked at back Baja California today, I went, oh my gosh, what is going on? It is like at least three times longer than it used to be. It just doesn't even make sense. It like, it makes it look like California itself, the state used to be way longer and like a big chunk was taken out of it. It just looks wrong. Yeah, like a chunk was taken out in between, like the state was longer and they took a section right out of here and left this strip. Yes. <laughs> or, yeah, or, it or it fell into the sea or something, but it just looks weird. So that one was the biggest geography change for me. In fact, book two, the one I'll be working on now, I've been working on it for like six months. Um, I actually am going to have a whole geography um, chapter in that book. I touched on it in here in the first book, but there was so much. You know how overwhelming this stuff is to, to organize. So the next book, um, I've been working with Lone Eagle. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably know who he is. Um, he's like the geography king to me. And there's another guy named Noble this D also on YouTube. They've done a lot of the most um, influential geography change videos. So both of those guys are my friends and they both said they were going to help me give me a lot of info for book number two, where I'll get some really detailed geography changes because Lone like traces countries and then yeah. comes back to them later to see if they've changed. He's that dedicated. So he's seen stuff shifting, even if it's just a few miles or whatever, he's watching it like daily. So I'm glad there's a lot of people out there that can kind of, if I have to cover the A to Z nuts and bolts, I'm a lot, I'm really glad there's a lot of guys who spend a lot of time picking one specialty about the Mandela effect and just, you know, beating it to death. Cause that's what we need. We need real researchers. We need people to ask questions. We need people to, you know, dive deeper. Don't just take the top 10 Mandela effects and, 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 and explain them away. What is the bigger picture here? We have to look at why this is happening, what is happening, and what can we do about it? We each can play our own little part. If it's just you making these YouTube live streams, if it's me writing one book, whatever, we have to try to like expose this because there's something way deeper happening here. And if it ends up being spiritual, if it ends up being whatever it ends up being, it doesn't matter as long as we get answers. That's what really matters to me is that we get answers. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Um, we're going to probably close it out in a minute, but before we do, uh, so everybody knows all your links for your website, your YouTube, your book and all that are listed in the show notes, but you want to just tell people verbally the name of your website and stuff. So when I do mirror this video later on, on Facebook and whatnot, maybe, you know, they might just see it and not, not look at the notes. What is the name of your website? What is the name of your book and where can people find it? And anything like that you want to mention? Totally. I appreciate it. Um, I made a website a couple of years ago, just so, because they're, with social media, we're spread all over now. We've got YouTube, we've got Facebook, we've got Instagram. So it's hard to find for people to find me. So I created a website. It's stashaerickson.com. And that's S-T-A-S-H-A-E-R-I-K-S-E-N.com. And if you go there, I've got a bevy of stuff for you guys. I have like a video blog where every video I've ever done is on there. Um, I have a contact page where you can contact me directly if you want to work with me somehow or if you have a Mandela Effect story. Um, I have an Etsy shop link in, on Etsy. That's where you could work with me personally, where I do like private videos, private readings, curse removals. I do a lot of stuff. I even make like healing products organically from people. I have a books tab on there. If you click on there, you can find all three books that I've written um, about like my awakening story, which was Diary of an Asset, the Mandela Effect book. Um, and also a book on animal communication for anybody who's an animal lover. And on the books tab, I also have a link to the campaign that I have going for book number two. I think we've re reached about $100 in donations for that book. Um, and it costs about 1000 to self-publish a book, to pay artwork, to do proofreading. I do a lot of it myself, but I kind of have to hire a lot of this stuff out too. So if anybody wants to come on and support the book, there's a link to the GoFundMe page on the books tab as well. And yeah, just in, in YouTube links, you guys can find me on YouTube. Just look for Stasha Erickson. I don't think anybody has my name like spelled the same no, way. It's really easy to find. If you just search it, it comes right up. Yeah. And here's the cover of the Mandela Effect book that's coming through. And you can see my name there again. This is a Mandela Effect volume one. And on the back, I even have like customer reviews from all of you guys with your feedback. And it's a really a community book. Like I wrote books before this, but nothing means so much to me as much as this one because it's something that had never been done before. There was only a couple Mandela Effect books on Amazon, and they were like short story books that were more um, science fiction based. So, you know, I'm not the best writer in the world, but I'm a really good researcher, and I try to find truth. And that's what I've been trying to do all this time. So anybody that can help support, you know, this work moving forward, it just means the world to me. You know, I just work from home off my laptop and go to school from home and undo all this stuff. So these are kind of like hobbies for me, but they're hobbies that are helping people and it's helping to change the reality that we once knew. And I hope that with this work that I really can help people and that we really can get to the bottom of what's going on here. Instead of just saying, you know, the world's out to get to get us and everything we knew was a lie. Okay, fine. We've established that, but now what are we going to do about it? Let's give our, get our power back humanity. You know, we are, amazing beautiful beings that have so much potential and if we can give each other credit not troll people and cut people down just listen i think we can make a lot of positive changes on this planet yeah it's one of the things i always say is you know we all need to just like what your book is doing is is the same type of thing we're doing with these youtube videos trying to build that bridge letting people know they're not alone and let's all share ideas because you know you might have a piece of the puzzle i might have a piece and i know if anybody that's listening and i say this all the time but it's such a big thing to me everybody you shouldn't look down on people for researching different topics don't call things a psyop without looking into them because everything you looked into that's the same crap you heard when you started looking into it you know what I mean? And don't and I hate when people tell people that's not a Mandela effect. People have to stop that too. Because Yeah, oh you're wrong. You're wrong. No, how you can't just say that, then you don't understand what's going on here. If we're from a different reality, of course it's gonna be different. That's the whole mentality behind it. So everyone needs to stop telling people that's not an effect. Nobody's the authority on this here. There's a million different there could be three different effects in every effect if there's multiple realities. So we gotta it's such a small community already already we have to stick together and like back each other up have each other's backs not like divide not call people out not put people down you know just support and i really love what you're doing here you have a great energy all my subscribers knew who you were today they said you've been doing some really great right. work so i'm really happy that you're kind of doing these these shows for people i don't have time to do stuff like this all the time so i'm really grateful for people like you that kind of get down on the ground level and meet with the community and and interview everybody like Gloria Kanata. She's really awesome. I've talked to her. I've seen her on your show. 
there's a lot of great people out here. And if we can stick together, we will get answers. You know, we're going to have the upper hand at, in, at, the, at the end of all this. I really think so. Well, and here's the other thing, too. And I don't know how you feel on this, but there's a lot of people that either look at this as a real negative thing or a positive thing. And I think it's very positive. I think we are chosen for some reason to see this. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can go in so many directions from there. But I don't see it as a negative thing at all. And it shows me because I was never really I wouldn't say I, I didn't believe in a creator. I wouldn't say I didn't believe in a spiritual side, which is something different. Um, but this kind of more than any other topic I looked into showed me that there's a lot more to this so-called reality that we're experiencing than we were told, you know, more than anything. Oh, yeah. Changing something will change, and I'll pop in my Star Wars, my Superman, and there's no more Christopher Reeves. There's no more all gold C3PO. No Mandela Burgle has snuck in here and updated all my movies for free in the middle of the night. So it's like they're trying to take away our childhood. What are they doing? <laughs> no, it's crazy. It's crazy. So I'll ask you one more question, and then we'll wrap it up. Why okay. did you decide to do this interview? Why did you decide to do this interview today? You know, it was really funny. I just had this calling to reach back out to the community again you know i was doing when this book first came out i was doing interviews like every week on big podcasts and radio shows went crazy for like a year and then i got really overwhelmed and i had to stop and breathe a little bit and i had seen your postings i'd seen your shows i'd seen how how consistent you were doing this and how a lot of the people supporting you were the same people that supported me. And I thought, you know what? I need to just reach out to Brian. We need to set up an interview. Let's just get together and make this happen today because I think we're from a like-minded group of people. And it's really important that we continue to keep this topic hot. It was like a trending Google topic for like a year last year. Now it's dying down again. We don't want to be a trending topic, but we don't want people to forget about what's going on. So the more people like you and I come together, talk about our experiences, talk about what we've been through and what's right for us. Then this is how we grow. This is how we get answers. And, and this is how we make progress. So that's really what made me want to reach out to you today. And I just really liked your energy. You have a really good energy about you. And I think the work you're doing is great. So I hope a lot of my subscribers come over to you and some of your subscribers will come to me. We'll just keep this, you know, community close knit and keep it going. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming on. Um, you're everybody, so you've been listening. thank you. Everybody, you've been listening to Dose of Reality Radio, My Awakening, episode 18. Make sure you check out also my Dose of Reality playlist on my channel, which has all my shows, including all these interviews, but all my regular shows, which we do on Saturdays. Uh, it's usually me, uh, Gloria Canada joins a lot, and Paul night and we talk about all different topics uh mandela effect is definitely probably the one we talk about the most but i also talk about 9 11 i talk about nasa flat earth we'll talk about frequency uh we talk about all sorts of stuff so and i've been doing short videos lately too in the middle of the week so make sure you guys check it out uh make sure you check out stasha's channel her links are all below uh in the show notes and on that note thank you everybody and uh tune in saturday i'll be back at 2 p.m eastern time saturday Thank you. Thanks, Brian. I'd love to come back again sometime. So feel free to hit me, hit me up anytime you want to discuss other topics too. I can talk about all those things as well. Just reach out to me. Oh, anytime. I, you I, yeah. I was already thinking that I'd love to have you on for one of the regular shows, not just your interview where we do a round table with like maybe the four of us or something. So we'll plan that soon. If that's cool with you. Awesome. Sounds great. I really appreciate it. And thanks for everyone in the chat room. I'm not good at multitasking, but I've seen you all in there. So hello. And thanks for joining today. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody.